how many people are you going to find who have 10 years of experience and have deployed AI technology in companies like eBay or Google or Amazon? Why, why does Alaska exist? You know, why, why do people go there? Gold. There's gold in Alaska. We came back with them in an algorithm that increased their revenue by 500%. They were the first billion dollar IPO since Google, all using machine learning. Let's say a normal company is looking at innovating, leveraging artificial intelligence. And they are kind of, they have some vague ideas of what can be done, at least from a business perspective, but they have no a full understanding of how to go about it. When uh, do you think they should outsource or in, and ask the help of uh, people that have been in the industry or when they should uh, hire their own team? They're gonna hire their own team and they're not gonna find anyone in a leadership position because there's no one in these organizations. You know, if you hire a team, you're gonna hire a bunch of AI people and you're gonna put them under a guy who maybe, you know, was a Ruby on Rails expert or maybe someone who works, you know, with solar or some some related technology. But you're going to have a lot of trouble finding someone in a leadership position who really understands this technology. And that's the challenge. There are lots and lots of data scientists who have like one or two years of experience now. Those people are everywhere, you know, people going to data boot camps, people coming out of school. Yeah, there's huge numbers of them. But how many people are you going to find who have 10 years of experience and have deployed AI technology in companies like eBay or Google or Amazon. You know, they, they just don't exist. So you've got a real problem. And if you look at the offerings now, you look for a while, Amazon was trying to offer AI services like object detection and, you know, automated machine learning. And, you know, Google and Amazon and Microsoft have these cloud services. But Amazon now is setting up a machine learning consultancy where they do projects for companies. Because they realize people can't take these Amazon services and use them to build anything. Like they need to have, they need more help. These off the shelf services Amazon has been providing is more like a lead gen to get people to come in and you, and I know this because they've tried to hire me, <laughs> you know. And, and Amazon has the same problem. They, they try to hire someone for their machine learning consultancy. Who do they hire to run the consultancy? I mean, how do you interview these people? They don't even know how to interview them. So it's a real problem finding people in industry who have that experience and who really know how to build these things. If you, and, and the people who really know how to do it, really the young people who really are good at it, they're out here in Silicon Valley starting companies. I mean, what, you know, if I were 30 years old or 25, yeah, I'd probably go do that. Start a, you know, go raise money, venture money. Because, you know, if you, you know when you're, um, you know, if you want to sleep four hours a night, that's what you do. But this, even even Google, I work with guys at Google. They didn't know this stuff. I work with the top guys at Google when I was at Aardvark. Google acquired this technology. They acquired Aardvark. They acquired Applied Semantics. They acquired Google DeepMind. And they transformed their whole company. They had to bring these people in and they, they you know, the magic of Google is Jeff Dean, when he was in grad school, worked on neural networks or maybe undergrad, he knew something about it, but it's taken them a long time to transform. So that's the real challenge that companies have, is, is the leadership, finding someone who can lead these projects. But then if, you know, at scale, this, uh, this technology has emerged in the last few years. I mean, it's been yes. around for a while uh, in the form of uh, predictive analytics that was part of it. Uh, it's been around in some of the uh, Silicon Valley companies. But it's, it's relatively, it's booming now. So how do you envision that companies can solve this problem of the lack of experience? Well, they've been acquiring, right? They've been acquiring startups. That's how they find leadership. And in Silicon Valley, that's how you do it. You find leadership, but you acquire people. That's how they do it. You find people who start an AI company and you buy them. When I, when I was at GoDaddy, they had acquired a machine learning company. Uh, and that was the group we were working with. You know, they acquire them. Uh, I mean, you know, you can go and try to hire them out of companies, but you have to pay them. You know, you have, you have to pay them a lot of money. Well, another problem you're going to find is that you're going to try to hire someone, and I have this problem, you're going to try to hire someone in Silicon Valley who has experience, right? This is an expensive place to be. I live in the most expensive place in the world, maybe next to, to probably more expensive than London or Tokyo, San Francisco. So you got to pay them. Are you going to be, and, and you're going to have a problem if you bring in a senior AI leader and you find out that their salary is twice the salary of your engineering director. 
that's a problem. And you're gonna have to convince them to, and if they're older and they live in Silicon Valley, you're gonna have to convince them to move. Well, they have family. So, you know, it's not that they're not, these people don't exist, but you've got to find them, hire them, pay them and move them out. Do you want to move to New York and make $500,000 a year? No, I, I don't want to move to New York. I live here. So these are real issues that you have to face. You're going to have to give someone, you know, a real package. If you want to hire them, you're going to have to give them a real package, which is attractive. Or you're going to, you know, we, you know, we do consulting. We try to train people. The challenge in Silicon Valley is always you want to find someone who's really, really talented, but is willing to work below their market cost, below their market price. That's what the Valley is all about. You find these young people, these kids out of Stanford or, you know, UC Berkeley who are super, super sharp, but haven't been in the market long enough to really demand crazy salaries. So you got to find them. It's, it's a real challenge. Even if you put the, the right person, this person has still to interface with all the business uh, yes. elements yes. Of, of the companies. I mean, there is a communication that has to happen there, but there is also, I mean, an ability of the entire company to take this one piece of innovation, take it to either save money, make money, or, uh, you know, improve somehow processes in a way or another. So what have you seen or what is your experience or your or your ins on, on that particular uh, Okay. Know, so there are sort of two ways people think about this, I think. A lot of people think that AI and data science, it's kind of like you're going on a treasure hunt. You know, we're going to Alaska. We just had a big conference in, in Alaska, the big data science conference in Alaska. Why why does Alaska exist? You know, why, why do people go there? Gold, there's gold in Alaska. So, you know, people think that data science is like, you're, you're, you're going and hunting for gold and you're gonna hire a bunch of data scientists and you're gonna give them a bunch of data and you're gonna lock them in a room by themselves and they're gonna come back three months from now and give you some magic and they're gonna find gold. Maybe, you know, half the time that might work actually. Being a good manager isn't always about knowing the technology. It's just sometimes just being a good person and knowing how to deal with people. And if you're smart and you know how to deal with people, you might be able to hire some young people or, you know, you know junior mid-level people, put them in a room, give them a bunch of stuff and they might come up with something. But that's a high risk endeavor, right? It's high risk because they might get, you know, you're going to have to, you're going to give them a lot of money and resources. You got to put them away by themselves. They're going to have to work by themselves with really no senior oversights. And you're going to have to hope that they come out with some chunk of gold, some nugget of gold that you can then sell. So a lot of companies are doing that. And it's kind of like a 50 50 shot. I have had projects like this where we came in, demand media was a good idea. They came in, they gave me some data. I flew out to LA, got some data, came back. We came back with them in an algorithm that increased the revenue by 500%. They were the first billion dollar IPO since Google, all using machine learning. So that was like, you know, I, I basically hit a home run. But I, I have a better, uh, what I really propose to people, that's really a very high risk endeavor. If you want to reduce your risk and you want to really have an innovation pipeline, what you have to do is think like a lean startup. And you have to ask yourself, how can I create some technology that I can move quickly into my production environment without too much overhead. And I can run an experiment to see whether we can use this solution to make money, save money, improve something. How can I run the experiment as quickly as possible? And, and you want to think to yourself, maybe I have six months to do this. I want to run six experiments. I want to run one experiment every month to figure out what's going to work. That, that's how Aardvark was done. Every month they did, they, they had a new product every, every month for six months until they settled on the actual product. So that's the lean startup. You have this ideation process, but it goes quickly. You can test it quickly. You have metrics that you can test. You can get feedback and you can decide, do I want to use this or do I want to kill it and do something else? Those are the most successful projects because you can iterate quickly. You can get immediate feedback. And if you get a win, now you have a win. Now, you know, every company is just a bunch of people and every project starts with just a few people and those people have to get an easy win. You have to be able to give them a win so you can, your, so your AI person can go to the manager and say, here, I, I have an easy win for you. Take it to your bean counters and tell them that we, it works, give us more money. That's what you want to do. If, if you've had a successful project in the company and you're trying to grow an innovation team or an AI team, you know, you've got to figure out what the resources are you're going to need to begin expanding. 
One of the challenges you may find is that when you first, you claim that you're doing AI, and it turns out you really didn't do AI at all. All you did was linear regression, and that worked well. And all you got, or you did some simple solution that you convinced people you got a business win, and now you're gonna go off and try to do something more sophisticated. Well, you still have the leadership issue. You can't do linear regression and then hire a bunch of AI PhDs and expect them to fit in. So you're gonna have to bring in, uh, you know, you're, you're trying to win the business so that you can begin building resources and growing. You're gonna have to create a team that can work together and do this. You know, uh, or, or, you know, a lot of companies, you know, there, there's sort of two approaches. You can create an isolated team or you can bring in AI engineers and data scientists and pair them with regular engineers.